Well, in the most extraordinary part of the decision, in my view, is the majority writes, and I quote, women, I mean, it's a quote now from the, the majority, women are not without electoral or political power. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so, end of quote. Repeat the line. Women are not without electoral and or political or, or maybe precise, not and or, or political power. That's another way of saying that you, the women of America, can determine the outcome of this issue. I don't think the court, or for that matter, the Republicans who for decades have pushed the extreme agenda, have a clue about the power of American women. But they're about to find out, in my view. It's my hope and strong belief that women will, in fact, turn out in record numbers to reclaim the rights that have taken from them by the court. And let me be clear. While I wish it had not come to this, this is the fastest route available. I'm just stating a basic fundamental notion. The fastest way to restore Roe Ro, is to pass a national law codifying Roe, which I will sign immediately upon its passage on, at my desk. And we can't wait. <clears throat> extreme Republican governors, extreme Republican state legislators, and Republican extremists in the Congress overall, all of them have not only fought to take away the right, the, our rights, but they're now determined to go as far as they can. Now the most extreme Republican governors and state legislators have taken the court's decision as a green light to impose some of the harshest and most restrictive laws seen in this country in a long time. These are the laws that not only put women's lives at risk, these are the laws that will cost lives. What we're witnessing is a giant step backwards in much of our country. Already, the bans are in effect in 13 states. Twelve additional states are likely to ban choice in the next coming — in the coming weeks.